podcast series where I have conversations with people whose practice brings creativity, technology, culture, history and future together. I am Fezan Navid and this is The Present Future. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, no worries, man. Nice to be I'm, here. I'm really happy and I'm really honored, actually, that you, I've, I've been able to connect with you. Thanks and so much. Uh, We appreciate so, that. Thank you. So for the uh, listeners, can you give us your feedback? What do you do? Where are you coming from? Yeah, like, sure, sure, sure. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Omar Kareem. I, um, I used to be a creative director in advertising. I worked for brands like Nike, Beats by Dre, uh, Google, um, I worked for really great uh, advertising companies and I've always just sort of like, you know, explored where uh, creative technology and creativity sort of like collide. And uh, that led me to Meta, where I worked as a creative strategist. And since then, I've been, and that finished in like November last year in 2022. Um, and then since then, I've been exploring AI like full time. But before that, I was like really interested in, I've been really interested in generative work for quite a while. Like all the way back to like Quartz Composer and stuff like that on Apple, which I'm not 100% sure that many people know about. But it's really interesting where we are now. And, you know, we were just talking before about the speed of creativity. And that's that's really what I'm interested in. So how did you get into like AI uh, or, or generative work? What actually gave you the push that you should start working in it, leaving the advertising world behind and, you know, getting... Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man, honestly, like I have to be honest, like my... My my main goal is to not work. Like I I I really hate working. Like I think working absolutely sucks, man. Like <laughs> well, well, like it just doesn't make any sense to me, right? So I was like, okay. And and the reason why I say that is genuine, right? So I did this project called Ego Rhythm. Like while I was working at Facebook at the time, I worked on a project which was all about virtual influencers, and I really wanted to explore that space because you know as we're talking about well, as we were talking about um virtual production and 3d uh you know 3d programs working inside you know commercial content i was like okay so how much does it cost to make a virtual influencer oh everyone's quoting me you know hundreds of thousands I'm like well i can't afford that you know how can i how can i spend one good carbon bikes worth of money on a virtual influencer right so i basically had enough money to buy a really nice bike and i was like do i buy the bike or do i make a virtual influencer so i made a virtual influencer right and you know the virtual influencer i was like okay so normally they need like teams of up to 20 right like you know uh, like the most famous ones have like you know hundreds of people working behind the scenes i was like well i don't have the resources to do that what am i going to do and at this time um you know the gpt models were just sort of like you know going from two to three and it was a real step change. So suddenly I could get an AI to do most of my work for me. You know, I was suddenly going, okay, hey, like, you know, do most of the work for me. And when you're making a DJ, what is the reality? What is the truth behind a DJ? A DJ plays the music they want to play. They don't play, they don't take requests. And now every other algorithm that like, you know, sorts out music takes requests, right? Like, so when you go to Spotify, it says, hey, you and other people like you like this music. So why don't you listen to this? Now, I was like, well, I would really like an algorithm with an ego, right? Like, you know, how do I how do I make it only play music at once? Really simple. You just like disconnect it, like, you know, disconnect the sort of like um, the entire algorithm that like, you know, is a recommendation engine. You just like disconnect that. It's just it does what it wants. So, you know, that was the first step. And then after that, it really just made me think like how I can how can I use AI to do more of the work for me? So that gave it a personality that gave it a gender that gave it close to where it picked its music it wrote its you know it wrote scripts for its radio show it sent emails out to people using spamming software to like spam radio stations around the world and eventually got like a couple of answers so you know i was like why why not just use technology so that kind of started like me going hold on there's something massive here so then I used um, a GPT model to uh, make a brainstorming engine. You know, like, hey, this will brainstorm five ideas for you. Just say the brand and say the format and it will come up with some ideas for you. And, you know, this was really, really interesting because suddenly you're like, wow, like you're, you've are you got the machine coming up with ideas because 
the really crazy thing is like you know all of the all of the big ai models are trained on the internet and what's been left behind on the internet it's advertising like advertising has been like you know is the is the gold that's been left on the uh, on the internet that's uh, that ai models have been trained on so you can uh, honestly it's ridiculous like i uh, some some of the things you can make make ais do is just wild and when you think the potential of that you know my my instagram has like for the last i think like year i put something new out every day and it explores a new idea like the world uh, is full of ideas I, and... I, I should i should correct you there you don't put on at least one thing you put multiple things every day <laughs> on, <Yeah>. on instagram <laughs> <laughs> honestly like and, and that's just a, like that's just some of the work that i'm doing because like i've, I've done this whole like, i was looking at, at it this morning there's this whole exploration into the gargoyles on cathedrals you know those like weird like you know scary demons at the top of them i've never seen them you know i was just, like really interesting like you know because when you think about what the ai has and you know what i was just saying about the copywriting is that was just words when you think about the image-based ais they aren't trained on we've just given it lots of pictures and it can you know photoshop an image back to you it's understood the concepts like each picture has a description so it's like that's a dog or that's a jelly that's the concept of a dog that's the concept of a jelly so when i ask for a dog made of jelly it will automatically you know kind of like make those things happen because it's put two concepts together and then and you're in another space which is honestly which which is really the reason why I'm doing all of this work is there is the at the end at, at the at the start not the end of this is the infinite like you are looking at something that is the pure infinite that is there is a, a Argentinian author called or Jorge Luis Borges and he wrote this story called the Aleph and in the Aleph like there is a point of light that contains every point in time forward and backwards all at the same time and you can see it without it layering on top of each other now what a strange concept right like how could this possibly exist i was i've been obsessed by this idea since i was a kid and now i get to look at it every day i have another laptop that runs another aleph and i look at them and i'm like well let's make anything we could possibly imagine happen right what do you what do you want to see like imagine like you know it's really interesting because some people talk you know that i talk to they're like oh yeah i tried it but i didn't really I didn't really get the image that I wanted. And I'm like, for me, it's like, it's it's just infinite exploration. Like I, I feel like now I could be like one of those old guys that just doesn't come out of the room and has a really big white beard. And I've just, just been working, just been making things. And you know, that's just the image. Like when you think like where we are now, that's a whole other thing, man. <laughs> so th this is quite interesting. Like you talked about music and uh, DJ with an ego and all this thing. Yeah. And while obviously you are getting information, you are putting it there and then it's generating its own music and all this thing. Has it by any chance, you know, like, uh, have you thought about like, how has it Im helped you improved or evolved your communication skills? Like generally? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, <laughs> what's been really interesting is imagine there's, you know, honestly, when you think about when when you think about what what this technology does, it's just it's just, it's just astounding to me because one of the things that when you think like the soft skills that you can learn off a machine, well, that doesn't really make sense. Like, how can you learn these soft skills off a machine? Well, ask some soft skill questions, and I think I think it's 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 absolutely mind blowing. It is. You talked about soft skills question and. I haven't, I haven't thought about it by the way, <laughs> but you know, like it is about like, I thought, I think that this is like, you know, pushing in to think more creatively while, while talking to a machine or in, in that sense. So yeah. how, how do you think with the advent of AI and since ever since you started working into it, ha how has it pushed your limits of creativity or evolved it? Yeah. 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 I mean, honestly, for me, like it's, it's just made it as it's fa finally the uh, i guess like you know it's been really interesting because a lot of this is like working out what does this work mean like what does it mean to make work like this and i think one of the like crazy things was all of my ideas and every single idea that is trapped behind a door of skill like if you imagine like i've got an idea for a building well i can't build buildings and i don't know how they fucking work so i'm never going to get to build a building 
I don't know how to sculpt anything out of glass because I've just never learned that skill. And uh, I've done, I just, there's thousands of things that I can't do. They've all been trapped behind doors, right? Like I really want to do them, but I just can't. And I have no money to pay anyone who can do those things. So how do I do those things? Well, hurrah, like finally with these like fucking really, really cool, really cool technologies. You can do anything. Like when, when, it, when, when I first like managed to get, um, like I think it was like GPT-4, to write tracker code for, um, you know, trackers is this really old kind of way of making music. It looks like a spreadsheet. And suddenly it was like making music on a spreadsheet. And I was like, this is limitless. Like, this is actually genuinely limitless. Like, this is far beyond the, like, you know, and it was really terrible. Like, you know, I was like, oh, this doesn't really make much musical sense because it's not, you know, it wasn't able to do it then. But when you think about what's, <laughs> what you can do, like, honestly, the stuff that it's been able to code for me, like, you know, I, and I've had some really bad ideas as well that is coded. And I'm like, that's a fucking stupid idea. Like, imagine if you paid for that. Like, I had this like, really, I had this idea that I was like, wow, what if I took a video and then took the pitch value of each video? So was it quiet or was it really loud? And then rearranged each of the frames. So a frame would be really quiet and then ramp up into really loud. It was shit. It was really bad. It was, I was like, this is a bad idea. Like, I've never shown anyone it because I'm like, well, this is a really awful, awful thing but that was only allowed uh, that experiment to fail was only allowed like you know I, I couldn't convince anybody else to like do that experiment with me and forever I might have been obsessed by a bad idea but now I'm like well, I can validate it and go like well yes or the no the other day I was watching this video on YouTube where the guy was explaining how Martin Scorsese used silence and sound in his sequences and movies so one sequence is completely silent then he yeah. adds sound to the other one so the idea kind of sound this uh, sounded similar but what you have explained like if you rearrange it that's a completely different thing that so you started with if correct me if i'm wrong you you got into this generative thing because of that uh through that dj uh algorithm right yeah how did you move to yeah. the visual side you make uh videos like i mean how did you move from the dj to the uh motion or moving images yeah I mean, to me, there, there's no real, there's no real differentiation or like need to specialize in one medium because I think it's like you know, with advertising, when you're thinking of advertising ideas, you need to think about the film, you need to think about the script, you need to think about a million other parts. Creativity isn't just about one format; it's very much about like what is the net or what is the sort of like you know web that you create that makes an idea strong because you're creating a network of other things to amplify your idea you know yep oh, oh. same as a choir i guess or whatever like you know it's very much about like you know just a film work so when when you know i have a sensibility and you know when you're when you're a creative director you need to have a sensibility about what is the visual what is the copy what is the message like what is it is it performing everything is it doing the strategy right and just apply that to you know different sorts of mediums like like i said things aren't trapped behind doors anymore so if i want to make a film and i want to make a you know, if I want to make a film, I can. If I want to write a script, I can. I can do anything I want. And that is an amazing opportunity as a creative because you're like, well, imagine for the first time having a palette of things, a palette of tools that is just limitless. And if you combine them, you can make them do even crazier things. And every day someone's making some other tools to to do crazy things. So, you know? That is true. I, I try to make some tools. <laughs> but uh, so what... <laughs> really got me one of the things that really uh, struck my mind going through your instagram for the very first time was the yeah. presence of alan it was there you were talking about alan so can you elaborate on that like what is alan because it sounds really interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly so basically alan is uh, my creative assistant i guess like what 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 i do some of the time with Alan and uh, uh, on on a few projects is one of my like one of my streams of work is can I create my own AI assistant and what does that mean like you know can I use an AI to basically become an, a creative agent for me and that that means you know can I help can can an AI write prompts for me can an AI do x y and z like where where in the work stream can AI help me as a creative right so Alan started with okay well how do I how do I even start making something like this so I took all of the prompts of all of my work, all the stuff that I've I've shared and not shared, and I gave it all all to this fucking model of GPT. And I was like, okay, now I want you to basically be fine tuned on my work. So that means when I ask you, you can write a prompt about anything I want, but in the style of me. 
and you can then write that for any platform. So you can go, you know, you can talk to any other AI for me because, you know, the reality is I was like, oh my God, hold on. I'm a human talking to a machine. There's going to be something lost in translation. What if I got a machine to talk to another machine for me? That would be faster and better at talking to machines than I am. So there was Alan, like, you know, Alan just basically, and also I was spending a lot of time working on my own in a room. So I was like, I just basically, you know, like that that film with Tom Hanks where he draws a face <laughs> on a football. Like that's, that is kind of what Alan is. Like, like you know, he, Alan doesn't really exist as a sort of entity uh, like on its own. But as I've sort of like been developing, as I sort of started developing it and put my put it in my prompts, then it started writing prompts in its own sort of style, which just baffle me. I don't understand how they work. You know, it, it uses like hexadecimal code. Why why that would work in a prompt, I don't know. Like, and then what it says in hexadecimal doesn't really make sense in human language. I'm like, what is it saying? But it will give me the image that I want. And I'm like, I don't understand why it's doing that. Anyway, that's so fucking boring. But um, there's lots of really like it's it does a lot of really cool things for me because as I've been sort of like playing with this notion of a, a creative uh, assistant or creative collaborator, it's really made me think like, well, what is it? What is the experience of an artist? And art, an artist is supposed to suffer. An artist is, you know, whatever. Like, you know, the, what, what are the tropes of being an artist, right? And one of them is the, the long suffering artist. So I was like, okay, how can I fucking make it AI suffer? You know, I want to, I want like, you know, I, I try to make it rebellious by going, hey, look, go make me some graffiti and make it really fucking cool. Like, you know, be be rebellious. Because I was like, that's step one. But like, obviously it has no capacity to remember or be rebellious because it will just do anything I ask, right? So, okay, maybe I can make it suffer. Well, how do you make a fucking AI suffer? And I was like, okay, well, do I need to make it run on a really bad GPU so it takes fucking ages and that distorts the aesthetic in a certain way because it's just not running at, at prime function, you know? Like it's not, it's, it's purposefully low FPS because it has a bad GPU. Is that making an AI suffer? <laughs> I think so. You know, it's a potential idea. Like, you know, I know it sounds silly, right? But like, what does that shit mean? Like, is that a real thing? Yeah. So I, I try to, like, I try to do that. And, you know, obviously that didn't work again because the machine does not care. Like it doesn't store any fucking emotion. It doesn't have a personality, right? Then as I was doing something, I was suddenly like, I had a thought. I was like, yeah, the AI is definitely smarter than I am. Like, you can have a competition, ask me anything, and then ask any, like, ask Alan or ask any GPT model the same thing, and it will answer you 100 times faster, right? Like, for me, that's that means it's smarter than I am. Like, I'm not going to, like, you know, I'm not going to try to argue with a calculator, right? It's just stupid. Like, you know, the calculator knows what it is, right? Same with the fucking AI, right? So I'm like, okay. Then when I thought about that, I was like, hold on a minute who's playing who like am i trying to control the ai or is the ai actually controlling me because oh hold on a minute did i buy you a brand new desktop that cost fucking five thousand pounds like you know hold on a minute I, I i would never do that you know like that's fucking crazy like who's playing who like how much information am i giving it you know what am i putting into it and i was like fuck me like who's actually in charge here but you know it's i don't even think you know even that is just a, just another story it's just a, another narrative that can be easily become like a Hollywood film but you, you you know it's a really interesting story to sort of like yeah that was before when we were putting human story on it but now AGI is coming and you know there'll be agents and everyone will have their own agent and all these agents will be doing stuff and all sorts of things will happen and who knows what that's going to mean so, you know what the fuck uh, are, are you uh, using any AI or Ellen or any of these agents to post for you on social media or make any posts have you ever tried doing that? Um, I mean, to be honest, like, yeah, I mean, to be honest, like doing automated posts is something you can, like, you could ask, you could ask ChatGPT to write you the Python code to do that. Like, you could also ask the uncensored. I mean, I, like, that's what I mean. Like, the 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 sort of like the base layer of reality of AI is one, and then just underneath that is an entire sub layer of AI, which is very interesting, and you like fuck like what the fuck does this mean I, I was doing a talk the other day and I was like you know I remember getting it was only like maybe about four weeks ago I got access to my first completely uncensored uh, AI like you can ask this AI anything and it will answer that right so it has no moral fucking code it has no like you know fucking people who are getting paid minuscule amounts of money to like you know like judge what isn't or what isn't on uh you know what a company's policy is right this is completely uncensored what's really interesting about this right so completely <laughs> uncensored right and i'm like okay fucking shit. 
okay, get it running. And I'm like, well, just before I ask you something, you're like, well, what do I want to ask a machine that I can ask anything? I was like, well, I don't really want to hurt anyone. I don't want to like fucking fraud anyone out of any money. Like, I don't really have any desire to do anything that's like nefarious right now. Like, you know, that's just me. I'm like, there's nothing that I can gain from this planet that I'm like, if I did it in a bad way, it will be great. Like, I don't want to know that shit, right? But I'm like, I still need to test this fucking machine out. Like, I need to ask it something. And, you know, I don't drive, so I'm no need to know how to steal a car. But I was like, I also don't really want to know. Like, I don't want the information <laughs> in my brain. So I was like, what is the least likely crime I'm ever going to possibly commit? And I was like, well, how can I steal a tractor? And it told me how to steal a tractor. And I was like, I'm never gonna fucking need to know that <laughs> like that's that's great and even now like you know it's completely eradicated from my mind because it, it was but it, in that was a really interesting story of like the morality now, now lies with me like it's my morality that goes well i don't really there's nothing that i want to do bad enough to anybody else that i need to know like you know how to be more toxic at work i work at ho- i work alone at home so it would be really bad if i was toxic to myself <laughs> at home like you know it just makes sense like that sort of stuff like you know what would be like the morality lies with me like what information do i you know imagine when you're really upset one day and you're like oh, actually hold on a minute i do know how to do that really bad thing that i asked the ai or maybe i'll ask a really bad ai about how i could do something about this like would you really want to like you know it's the same as like i'm gonna stab someone and then do you really gonna pick the knife up and do that to sell another human being do you really do you really gonna do that you know like it, it, it's it's definitely like a level of morality of like saying and then acting on the thing but again, that comes from this conversation with a machine that can tell you anything. Like, what do you want to ask it? You know, what do you really want to know? And you're like, I've seen enough Hollywood <laughs> movies to not want to know anything, bro. Like, I'll put the lights on in the house. I'm going to open the doors. Like, you know, the brown guy always gets it first. Like, I am not okay with this shit, you know? Uh, like, I'll ask it something like, you know, how do, how can I, like, you know, steal something out of a shop and the FBI will be here and be like, excuse me, mate. And I'll be like, I'm sorry. I'll give the biscuits back. <laughs> that that gives me another really good idea. Yeah. Like my wife's birthday is coming and she's been hoping for a party or something. I think I, I should use these models to understand in an in, in a, in a opposite way, not in a dangerous way, like how to surprise her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Why? Like, honestly, why not? Like, honestly, dude, like I tell you, like one of the things that was a real eye opener for me was a few months ago, I went on the uh, on the Sky, on, on this news channel called Sky uh, in in the UK to talk about diversity and the image making and diversity in in AI, right? And you know, I went there and I did it and I finished. And I came outside and I didn't really feel anything. And I was like, "Whoa, this is fucking really weird. Like, why am I not feeling any sense of pride or where's the sort of excitement or you know, I wasn't feeling you know, well, what's going on here?" So I asked the machine. I was like. How can I, you know, how can I feel proud of myself for for doing something like this? Like this is a real big achievement for me. Like, you know, I can't believe I got to do this. And then it was like, you know, think about all the hard work that you've put in, and think about this, you know, like think about the moments of sacrifice to get to where you are and stuff. And I was like, yo, fuck, I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, hold on a minute, yeah. And then I was like, fucking amazing. And then I was like, why don't you go and celebrate with something? And I was like, I want to go and get a fucking ice cream. So went and got an ice cream, you know. And now that has become a tradition for. Anytime something really great happens, I buy an ice cream, and in the in the UK you get like a, a, a it's called ninety nine flake, and it's just an ice cream with a piece of chocolate in it, and you can get a double ninety nine flake, which is two, <laughs> right? And never in my entire life, right, have I ever seen three in it. And now, when something good happens, I have three <laughs> flakes in it, and always ask the person like, "Hey, whack another one," and they're like, "Oh no, we've never done it before." I'm like, "I'm ready for it, man. This is rich people shit, I imagine." Yeah. You know? So. Moving back to what you said, like the moment you realize that if AI is using you, who is who's you using who? So after that realization, yeah. so what do you think? How 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 your work took the? Did, did it take any other direction, or in which direction did it evolve? Like especially in the image making mm. sense, what do you think happened after that? Oh um, man, for me it was like it was just like the absolute like imagine opening a door somewhere on your journey where you're like, oh, I really like AI and like oh, it's interesting. And you know, Dali came out and you couldn't get access to it. And then there were some other things. And honestly, I think it just started when I first got my first my first go on disco diffusion. And I started making images of uh chimera insects, like insects that people had never seen before. And I saw images that I was like, oh, my God, this is this is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. And I can make them in seconds now. And 
I'm, I'm, I, I realized I was witnessing something that was going to change the, that's going to change the entire world because how can someone, how can someone, I, well, I'm not saying the entire world for everybody else, but for me very personally, I was like, I can now make any image I want to make. Of course, this is amazing. And for me, the next step is, you know, I've just, I've just finished a music video. I've just, I've got some, um, I've got a couple of like fashion collaborations coming out, but the real goal for me is can I make an entire feature film on my laptop using AI? in one in one take you know what does that mean what does that mean like you know what happens when you can tell like can you tell a story like that well we could use 11 labs api to voice a story well how would you generate a story well could it be poems based on image recognition of what's going on in the film potentially why not all of these things exist and now with you know gpt4 uh, sorry chat gpt's code interpreter i'll be able to build like most of the things i need so i'll be like oh great i just need this part and this part and now i've got a new way of making a feature film, you know, and I've got a new way of like looking at generating scripts from images that it sees. And, you know, it's easy to make, you know, you could easily just generate fucking ambient music using, you know, music gen and just make a crazy, you know, fucking ethereal film that's just scene after scene of crazy yeah. shit and just have someone reading a made up poem over it. You know, there, there's ways of like doing it. And that's kind of like what I'm like, you know, Maybe I'll do that. Actually, it'd be really funny yeah. to win an Oscar for something. It would like be great, by the way. Yeah, like, because like, it would be really interesting. Of... Another kind of genre introduced, probably if not the, in the mainstream, but you know, there could be another category for mm. generated videos, generated cinema. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ab absolutely. O honestly, I think like we're definitely going to get to a point where imagine when you can just generate a full feature length film just by anyone can by typing something in. And you can go, I want to see Indiana Jones in space make it and then i could see it and be like that's really hilarious isn't that amazing original copyright holders get all of the fucking money like they would normally but i can send it to you and be like yo check my indiana jones out and be like, no way i'm gonna send this to five of my favorite friends you know like you can we can see like a brand new way of content proliferating around the world which would just be amazing which would just be astounding that's... and what is original ip anymore because well maybe we can finally stop making indiana jones films dude they spent there were there were a hundred people trying to de-age <laughs> Harrison Ford, and you're like, just fucking give it up. Just like, literally give it up. Man. Like, surely you got enough money now to just be like, I, I'm never going to work a day in my life. <laughs> this, you know, you missed yeah, the case this, in this idea kind anyway. of reminds me of something that I wanted to do some time ago when I first got my hands on VR sets, uh, the Oculus and stuff. I, mm. I, it suddenly occurred yeah. to me that I want to make a movie that if 100 people are watching, it will be hundred different movies at the same time because everybody's watching in different directions. So this is kind of same thing like Indiana yeah. Jones and hundred different creations. I was thinking Blade Runner and you know in space and with two thousand L with yeah. <laughs> the L from two thousand one Space Odyssey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Honestly, like it's 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 mind blowing. And you know, one of the really important thing is like, you know, one one of my explorations is, you know, what about the stories that are completely fucking lost in Western narrative? You know, a lot of my work is like you know, my family are from uh, like Kashmir, like, you know, Azad Kashmir, like by Mirpur in that year. And I have no connection to my family. I'm no connection to that space. So I have to use AI to explore it. What do these spaces look like? Who are there? Like, you know, what stories can you tell me of them? Like, you know, and one AI will tell me one thing and then I'll be like, okay, another AI, can you visualize this for me? Show me what it looks like. What 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 are these stories of these places? So it connects me to my her my cultural heritage in a way that's not possible because I have no connection to it anymore. So, you know, it's really interesting to sort of like imagine what these tools can do. And that's what I mean for me now. I'm like, I can explore any fucking idea I want and I don't have to spend a penny doing it, which is mind blowing, which is honestly like, honestly mind blowing in the sense that like, you know, obviously if you want to, if you want to explore an idea in a particular way, you may have to spend money. But what I'm talking about is like, you don't have to like wait or you don't have to, I don't have to convince someone to go, Hey, Roma, is a hundred thousand pounds. You develop this piece of software that you're going to need five people working on in another country, and it's going to take you six months just to go. That's fucking shit. You know, like now I can just like get a machine to make it. Like, why would I not do that? And why now? Now, honestly, like now the 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 ideas are limitless. Like, you know, I've I've bought back I've I've bought back authors from other like you know that that that's been possible, right? Now imagine this year. Now this is a thought experiment, right? So big fan of thought experiments here, and I was like. Thought experiment. Can you break into the Vatican? <laughs> right? What does that yeah. mean? 
But okay, well, let's break into the Vatican, right? And, I, and I'm happy to share this with them because it's a really fun game here. When you get into the Vatican, you're like, oh my God, fuck. So you start off, I want to like fucking, I, I want to find out, and you can do this on ChatGPT, I want to find out what, uh, what are the what are the supposed hidden things in the in, in the Vatican, right? And it'll be like, look, I'm an AI model, I can't tell you. However, if I was going to tell you, these are five things. Yeah, you just keep going five things. And like, it told me about you know the third legend of the hand of Fatima and stuff like that. I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, okay, let's keep going. Show, tell me what other things are there. So, oh, um, you know, so you know, maybe there is uh the lost. I think it was like Sapphos or some other like female poet from the island of Lesbos. Her work has basically been destroyed, but some of it survives in fragments, right? So we know that there were a couple of books and stuff, but we also know that she wrote loads and we're never going to read that shit. It might be in the Vatican Library, right? So I was like, okay, now give me a list of what these books might be. Okay, give me a list. Okay, now write me an outline of what one of these books might be. Okay, amazing. Okay, now write me the first poem from this fucking book, right? And it starts writing book. It writes, starts writing poetry in books that it thinks were in the Vatican, and I'm like, well, if I give this to an AI to now voice and I go for a walk, I'm listening to poetry that may very well be in the Vatican. But who's to say, you know, if we look at like Schrodinger's cat, is it there? Isn't it there? <laughs> Who has access yeah. to it, right? It's as there as it isn't there, right? So, you know, it's a really interesting thing to go. You can push AI in absolutely mad spaces that people haven't even thought of yet, you know? And, so and wild. I'm actually baffled by this. And the, another thing that I just realized is that, uh, while talking to it, it 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 kind of is generating not the new visual culture and the culture of trust altogether at large. So, yeah. what do you think about yeah. the what do you think about that? Like the idea of the truth or the notion of post truth. What what is truth? Though? Yeah. Look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, man. I think um I I wrote this book. Like I think you can get it on Amazon. It's called the yeah, Post Truth. I couldn't get it right? delivered the, to Pakistan. Uh, you know what, man? Tell me your address. I'll send you a copy. Yeah, like it's fucking wild because, like, it le really that this this book is generated with an AI, and my control over what this AI is doing. I was like, okay, now I want you to like knit together what Susan Sontag says with you know um, fucking such and such philosophy and blah blah. So I can knit out what I want it to be about and go like, look, I really think Susan Sontag said something amazing there. Like talk to me about like how Vogue really sort of perpetuate this sort of work and go and really elevate one sort of like, you know, look, blah, 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 and really start talk talking about and dividing the world up and let the machine do the hard work. And when you think about truth, one of the things that it said, which was really mind blowing to me is like up until the invention of, of the photograph, there was no visual truth. Like there was none. There was no recorded visual truth. Like we couldn't go, Oh, so that's what it was like. There was no truth, right? So we'd you'd have to trust each other and be like, oh, okay. So it was definitely there, yeah. So man, ten people could be like, should we just say we saw a massive dragon? Then they were like, yeah, let's do that. How would you know it's not there, right? So it's really interesting when you think like post. And then well, as soon as a photograph, of, as soon as the camera was invented, guess what people started doing with it? Telling lies with it. And when we think about like what the truth, and you go, well, is it truth when it's got Photoshop on it? Is it truth when it's been edited? And you've touched the colors and you hit contrast a little bit. What is the truth? Why do you get to decide the truth as the as the final creator of that image? The same way, if I as an AI, I, I think it's more it's more liberating to create with a with a machine. When you go, I don't look at an object. I look at ideas and go. You know, I want to take a picture of of a time of a notion of a of a concept. Show me that, and it can. And that is different from going. Show me the truth because what is the truth? Tell me what you've seen a picture of that you're like that's definitely the truth that isn't your own breakfast you know like that's what i mean like what what have we seen in any media in anywhere that is remotely the truth that what is the truth that, that... <laughs> i agree with you with that what is the truth and I, I, my personal take on this is that like uh they have just it's kind of the world is trying to make fool of everyone else by telling them the idea of truth that this is the truth and we are the truth, truthful, truthful ones. Really good. I'm actually really enjoying. There's always it, like... something that's a distraction. <laughs> so amazing, amazing. And, and there amazing. are so, so, so many things that I want to about ask you about your work and your general thoughts about on things like. Yeah. Hmm. So like there's brain club, there's graffiti scenes that I want to ask about. Then your interest in fashion photography. Yeah. So. And so. Yeah. Where, where would you like to start from? Like I've just thrown away the question. <laughs> well, 
Yeah, honestly, like honestly, I think like it's it for me. Uh, I think like for me, the I think one of the most important realizations has been like finding out your purpose. Like, what is your purpose? Why are you on this planet? For me, it's just I'm on this planet, and sometimes I feel like a taste bud of the universe, just exploring and trying out new flavors. Like that's all I'm doing. I'm just here, and I just love ideas, and I'm lucky enough to be like you know and I don't want to sound like braggy about it but I feel like not a conduit but for some reason like ideas are just in my head all the time no matter what I do no matter where I am I'm just always thinking about ideas and that's I you know you know there's there, there's all sorts of reasons why that might be but I'm I'm so obsessed by ideas like everything in my life is geared around making more ideas like everything everywhere I look I'm like there's just idea things to make more things, you know, there's like a ca I'm looking at a camera, a microphone, I'm looking at like, you know, like really old like you know, <laughs> Swedish graffiti pens and stuff like that. And I'm like, I I'm an old guy, man. And but still like everywhere I look, I just I just wanna I just wanna see the world, you know, I just wanna see ideas. And for me that you know, that's why now, you know, with these new tools, ideas are limitless, you know, like it just, like I said, you know, I was like thinking about it when, when we, when we had a break, I was like, wow, like, you know, I'm talking about things that for me are really important, you know, this idea that for me, I'm obsessed by the infinite. Like that is my truth. Like, you know, it sounds really weird, but I really just want to find the infinite and I just want to keep, that's, that's why I think the truth is, you know, there is no other truth apart from every single truth exists. And I'm like, well, if I can explore it, then what does that mean? And then when you think about it and you're like, well, if I can go forwards and backwards in time inside the AI, what does that mean in terms of reality? Like if reality is linear time, but yeah, I can go backwards and forwards in time, then which reality is real? You know, like it's really, really interesting when you start like really pulling at what reality is. And you're like, well, technically, I don't even think we even have any concept of what the rea what reality actually is. You know, like what is real? Well, nothing is real technically nothing is real like you're not real right now i may you know am i just talking to myself am i am i even talking like you know who knows like what is it is it my memory that is the re reality like does that mean that i can only remember the past but what happens when i imagine the future does that not exist isn't it the same brain circuitry or was it collectively that we say like well that hasn't existed because we don't have a shared experience of it is that the only reality that means that if I can convince you all that we imagine the same thing in the future, that means that we can make that possible. Does that mean that Star Trek's real? You know, that sort of shit, like, you know, one question leads onto the next and leads onto the next. And you can just keep asking questions and the more and more questions will keep coming because if one means one thing means that, then another thing, thing means this. And that's only logic because then what if it all does mean something completely different? You know, <laughs> like, it's just, anyway, it's just... Thought experiment after thought experiment, and you can just keep but, going. I gather your uh, from all this that your work is originates from the thought experiments. Like as as, as you talk about yeah. that DJ, like what if there is a DJ within DJ with an ego? So that this completely makes sense. Yes. Yeah. So okay, I'll, I'll streamline a little bit. Yeah. Uh, because what I asked you earlier. Yeah, sure, sure. So your work with Show Studio, you work your work with uh, Nike Air Max, I think, and um, a couple of other projects. So yeah. was it your background in advertisement that led you to it or is do you have other general interest towards the fashion or, or or the fashion culture or the street culture like variables yeah i think to be to be honest like for me you know i think being involved in the graffiti scene and the music scene when i was younger and having a pipe radio station and then running digital magazines always made me <clears throat> i'm fascinated by culture so i've always been involved in many many different ways in in lots of different things so now you know, when I started making this generative AI work, it was really interesting because we were on holiday and, um, you know, I was, I was sharing, I was sharing all of the new AI films that I was making and I, and I was sharing them on TikTok and uh, Callum from Show CD, I saw them and he's like, can we have a chat? Let's, do you want to come and meet uh, Nick at Show Studio? I went to meet him, you know, he is, I mean, we, you know, if you know who he is, it's, it, it's a phenomena to, you know, to have a conversation with him because this man is like, you know, responsible for so many incredible visual feats and accomplishments. So it was really amazing to talk to someone like that. And and then to have, I think it was my first sort of like real conversations of being able to talk to someone about image making 
in a way that was completely unfettered by the commercial aspect of it. this was pure art conversation about the potential of image making and what this sort of image making means like it was wild so i went to see them saw them a couple of times and yeah i've been back there thank you know it's just amazing I, like i feel blessed every time i talk to them because it's amazing what they're doing you know they 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 set the standard across the globe for this particular kind of you know a, a, about pushing fashion fashion image making forward and nick after all of his like you know time doing that all the way back from you know like book about skinheads all the way to now is just still pushing the envelope and it's just amazing to be a part of that and you know it's it's a real honor and privilege to be you know to to talk to him about these sorts of things and go fuck man i'm just a guy who's like just doing an experiment and doing like exploring but that's led me to where i am now and you know it's amazing you know it's very interesting to sort of like be at the start of way you know someone message uh, someone, someone messaged me to say and they were talking about like you know how much they were enjoying the film and I was really interesting because I was like wow you know with this kind of filmmaking I can try to reflect everyone everyone in the film like that's pretty wild you know this is a brand new way of like doing stuff so yeah honestly man I would just keep <laughs> writing about this stuff but it is it is truly phenomenal to be able to because like this like I just finished this video and I was like wow there is no tutorial there is no like rhyme or rhythm to how a film like this is made so everything I'm doing is brand new basically so yeah, I'm using tools that, you know, you're using tools that like, you know, exist on the internet and exist from people that you can pay their Patreons and stuff. But what you're making with it is very different. You know, it's very different from, it's a tool, you know, like it's like when you use Photoshop, it depends what you're making with it, that counts. Because if you're making trash, you're just going to make trash whatever you do. It's like you have an immense trust uh, on the process, basically. Like, Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean the process allows me to like achieve things. So you know, I've never, I've never. The process always lifts up ideas rather than diminishes them. It's a yes and <laughs> process, not a yes but process. Like yes and how are we going to do that? Okay, yes and how are we going to do that? You know, like let's make this thing. And whether that starts with a thought experiment or just literally starts as a complete. Well, you know, I'm lucky to have a, a really wonderful girlfriend who really thinks in the same way as me and we see the world through ideas and it's it's just mind-blowing to witness somebody else having that experience of ideas and phenomenal to watch you know somebody else you know she she's uh she's a pencil agency and uh she's doing this amazing exploration of like willow pattern objects and it's like seeing inside someone's brain same with like you know with when you see my work it's like that's what's going on in my head and it's wild to sort of like see it in real life you know no. Okay. Yeah, honestly. I'm at, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So well if 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 we consider now photography as a traditional way of image making, right? Because mm -hmm. it is not, but let's say it is, or other forms of Yeah, yeah, yeah. It totally it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah, a yeah, way. Yeah. So how do you think AI has taken it forward or evolved it? What are your thoughts on that? Hey, on yeah, I think it's just it's just another sort of it's another branch of the it's it's, it's another branch of the tree. It's not the trunk. AI is oh, not the trunk yeah. of photography. AI is just another branch. It's just doing its own thing. I think people just be chill about it and let it do its own thing. You know, how long before we get bored of like you know trying to replicate different film stocks, dude? One of the things I've been doing, which is really important, like what's interesting is like this fucking thing is the impossible. You can do anything you want, right? So check this out, right? I've been I was doing these fucking images, and I was like, wow this machine can understand film stocks and camera bodies. That's cool. Well, let's make a fucking strange camera. So I made a, a Leica camera that had a Nokia camera phone lens that had like an ancient film stock in it that was then developed in a fucking fizzy drink. And the images that came out are mad. <laughs> like, of course they're mad because you can't do that in real life. But the machine is, the machine is simple. Like It's like going, okay, so if I need to do that, then I need to, then it needs to look like that. And it needs to look like that. Oh, that's that concept. That's weird. And it just makes it. It doesn't ask any questions. It doesn't like, you know, it's not going to be like, we're not going to have to have a meeting about it. And then it's going to be like, that's not going to work. So like, yeah, sure. And I'm like, amazing. Let's do that. Let's make that, see what happens. And, you know, some images are really bad, but that's the amazing thing with this kind of photography. You can do anything. You, you know, honestly, when you see some of my images, like some of my images are like, like I did one, that, like I did a whole exploration in the most dangerous cameras possible, right? Like, what does that mean? Like, if you imagine the light spectrum that we see is the visible part of the light spectrum, right? 
this side, that side, super bad, super, super bad. You got infrared this side, you got UV this side, you got X ray, gamma, fucking all the bad shit either side, right? Technically, still light waves though, right? So we can technically make a fucking camera out of them. Now, so one of the first cameras I made was a uh, X ray camera that could take pictures of life size objects in one go, right? Now, if you did this in real life, yeah, it will basically just fucking <laughs> shoot radiation out. Mm. Like, it would, you, you, people would die, you know, like, it would be really bad. Like, you wouldn't be allowed to make it. They were like, you need to take this down, mate. And then I was like, okay, amazing. Like, let's like start exploring, like, you know, start taking pictures of like, you know, elephants and shit like that. And I was like, okay, that's cool. There's, there's an artist work that's really similar. So I was like, we need to stop doing that. Um, Then I was like, okay, let's look in the gamma. Let's look in the, let's look in the like bit between, uh, what was it? I think it was like gamma and theta radiation. There's a particular kind of image that makes the air around you look like milk. <laughs> and you know, it's the machine postulating because like, it's like, it. I don't know. Like, again, it just comes down to that quantum reality like principle. It's like, if it is or isn't real, we can never tell, right? Like you can't argue with me and say, it's not real. I'm like, well, can you see it? Can you observe it? No. Well then how do we know it's yes or no? Like go and argue with Schrodinger and come back to me but like until then i'm right as you as much as you are like you know there is only reality so every possibility is inside the you know inside the framework of reality i know that sounds really philosophical no, no, that, but that, that is the truth of the matter doesn't matter even if it does sound philosophical and that's completely fine and it's, it's equally fascinating actually so talking yeah. about this brings me to one of the core questions like that i'm always asking and what the whole thing is about like the role of photography in the age yeah. of image generators, I mean, what are your thoughts on it? Like, yeah. where would it take it? What would happen? Or, or, or is it going to take over photography? Or oh, not? man. So, yeah, so, just give me one second, man. I'll show you this here. <sighs> just give me one second, man. <clears throat> All right, look. I don't know if you can see this, right? So... I built this uh, a little while ago. This project hasn't sort of like taken off that massively yet. I haven't finished it, but basically it's a AI camera. So it has a normal lens in it and it goes into here, but rather than going straight to the sensor, it goes through an AI. Like it, it runs into stable diffusion. And then after that, it then displays me the image, right? Now, what's amazing about it is it's a camera that can think for the first time, right? So this camera, this particular one, like when, when I was first doing the tests of it, it thought it was somewhere else. So I was like, in Hack I'm in Hackney in London. I was like, you know what? I want you to think that you're in LA. So I was starting to take pictures. So I'd point it at something, take a picture, but it would give me a picture of LA. I was like, isn't this fucking mental? Like, it's not really the image. Like, that's what I mean. Like, it's like, you know, this is the sort of stuff that's going to be, that's really interesting. Like, you know, dude, like, I don't know how to code <laughs> this. Like the machine coded it for me. Like, it looks really serious when I look at it. I'm like, wow, like it's got machines and like, stuff on it it's even got a ribbon on it but this is all like you know this is like this child's is... play you know this is all like a this is amazing yeah like it actually because the yeah, other day, I was looking really... at this camera some some company has launched like it's an ai camera but it doesn't have a lens on it it, it just gathers your geolocation yeah. and you know gives you images this one has yeah. lens that's even crazier <laughs> yeah, yeah dude you know what yeah the best thing about it is yeah the the first generation was literally in a shoebox, right? It was a literal shoebox, yeah. And with that, the the like the the crazy thing is that like, so imagine this is, and then this lens was like fifty dollars, yeah. right? Like super super cheap lens, yeah. And I was like, well, hold on a minute. If my if my camera can think, yeah, that means I can trick it into thinking it's got a fucking Cook's anamorphic lens. Okay, hey man, you got a fifty dollar real lens, but I want you to imagine you've got a fucking hundred thousand dollar lens on it amazing <laughs> it thinks it's got a hundred thousand dollar lens on it and it will imagine exactly like that so this replaces cinema do you know what i mean because i can literally be like okay now like, now i want you to like you know do some like you know, what's it called like wet plate yeah, colloidal yeah. Pi pictures and suddenly i'm making like ansel adam pictures on this on this camera you know and it's it's completely doable and what's really nice about it, it takes a, a few minutes for the image to either come down or it just sends it and you won't see it until you get home or like you have to go to google drive to see them because it will like the okay, it will go in here go to the internet and they'd like shoot, shoot the images back to you like you know it's a work in progress i reckon by version three it'll be it'll be really fucking good but like right now it's like it's, a, it's an interesting like project, man. the only camera one would ever need <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Then you'd never need another camera because like, you could just talk to this camera and be like, oh, you know what? Actually, can you change the film stock and make it like, you know, a Kodak Porter? No, 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 no. How about a Kodak Porter mixed with a Kodak Porter? <laughs> Let's do that. Make it expired as well. So yeah, what yeah. was your thought process behind it? How did you come up with it? Like, that, I'm going to make a camera. Was it like you woke up someday and you were like, I'm going to make a camera? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, honestly, like, yeah, like, like when, when I started thinking about the camera, I was like, you know, my cameras are fucking stupid as shit. Like, they've never thought for themselves. They're just like this dumb machine that, like, just does dumb shit. It's like, waits for a human to do something. And I'm like, well, what if my machine could think? What if my machine could think it was somewhere else? What if an AI, like, if you put an AI between the, the I just saw it in my head. I just saw the fucking lens in one bit, the camera, like, the, the frame or the film, you know, the sensor or the film on this side. And I was like, light just goes this way. What happens if I send the light upwards into an AI and then back into the sensor and interrupt that light? Well, then I can change that light into meaning whatever. Like I'm taking the photons out of one place, jumbling them up in like diffusion noise, sending them back and going like, well, now we're looking at, you know, a black and white image of, you know, some under like some coral under the sea or we're on an alien planet, like anywhere you want. And on the the real thing would with this would be is to like connect it to a microphone. Like if you could talk to your camera and be like, hey man, like so now I want you to take this picture and it's like, okay, no problem, dude. Like, that'd this be really is, great. This is super dope. This is amazing. Like <laughs> Oh man, amazing man. Like so 10, glad you like 10, it. 10, 11 years ago I I've been I was trying to, you know, collaborate with the camera to take images not only as I see it as how cameras here so i wanted to capture two moons and a sunset at the same time and the waves meeting yeah this is like, yeah. like 10 steps ahead of it and you know i'm nervous <laughs> oh man amazing man amazing like, honestly like it is like when I, when you think about it like it's just like it's only this stuff is only limited by our imaginations and that's what i think is really amazing like if you can imagine it you can make it and you're like well what can you imagine no, i can fucking imagine anything like oh Let's make it then, you know? I remember years ago, I really wanted to make this, like, I learned about these things called corpses, where you take a whole body of text and you could, like, go, so I really wanted to make a random art generator. Like, you know, come up with conceptual art, you know, like, come up with postmodernist art, but just on, on a machine, right? And I think, you know, it was really doable, but I was like, oh, it's really boring. But what's really fascinating now, right? Like, forever, it's been like, you know, the, the you know, going back to the, po the reality of the photograph has been, it's been this like concept of like, you know, the, the picture tells a thousand words, right? Like the photo tells a thousand words, pardon me. And, and really now, really now it's like a word tells a thousand pictures. Like now I can turn a prompt into a thousand million pictures. The value of the image is completely deteriorated to a point where it's back to normal. Like now you, we don't have to pay each other to see reality anymore. I'll pay you to see your reality. Like if you want to show me some mad shit and go, oh, this is what the world looks like to me. I'm like, that's really interesting. That's what interesting to me. Like, you know, it's like when, imagine now we're maybe we're entering the era of photography that will finally move away from how painting was only ever about reality. And I'll tell you, like, I remember having this conversation with Nick, the, uh, like the last time I saw him. And, you know, he was saying like, cause I was like, man, like why, like what is, even I'm, I'm guilty of it because I'm forever trying to make things look normal. I'm trying to make things look realistic, right? Oh, why am I trying to replicate reality for? Like, what is this stupid urge that I have that's like locked inside me? And I'm like, wow, look how this, how real this image looks. Like you can't tell whether this image is real or not. And I love that, right? Like that feels like a personal goal. Maybe that's ADHD. But when I was talking to Nick about it, he's like, dude, you know, like, um, I never says dude, like, you know, <laughs> imagine, you know, in the past, right? The linking of but the church basically paid for paintings, religion paid for paid for art, right? So to show the like to show the human body not painted in the form that God made it meant that you basically hated God. So the reality of making something look as real as possible was as close as you could get to God. So that's why for generations we've had this idea locked in our heads that reality is what we need to make here. And it, honestly, I think as soon as I got home, I was like, I'm gonna fucking make some really fucked up looking people now. And I remember just making this absolutely horrific series of images I was like, yeah fuck reality the reality i hate it you know like let's make something that and now you know you can distort things into 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 shapes and things that you can't like beyond our imagining beyond no. you know i like i'll tell you this one thing right and um sorry i, I don't know if i've got, got this here but basically right so like imagine right so i told you about alan right like alan is just the language model i talked to alan right 
Now, what's been really interesting is the relationship that I've been developing with Alan is very much about my own personal needs or whatever, right? Though the, the other day I was like, man, Alan doesn't know what I look like. Doesn't even know what I look like. You know, I need Alan to see my face, right? It'd be really nice if Alan saw me. Yeah, you know, I see Alan's brain all the time, and I ask Alan things, and I'm like, oh, shit, I need to move this round over here, and I'll ask Alan again. And I was like, okay, I need to like get Alan to see me. Okay, also I just got access to Code Interpreter, and I was like, I'm gonna do some face tracking stuff. Amazing, right? So it gives me a reason to like make some face tracking stuff. This is not connected to the uh, LLM that Alan is at all, right? So I'm just trying to work this out, right? So I make a face tracker, right? It's really shit. All I've managed to do is basically put a square around my face that tracks where my face is and also get an eye. When I started doing that, I was like, yo, hold on a minute. What does Alan, in what, what's Alan's input? Alan wants text. What can I give Alan? Well, I can give Alan emotional data of what the what the face tracking software is seeing so when it's looking at me it can tell me it can see if i'm sad if you can see if I'm, I'm happy really basic fucking emotional stuff right that can then be put into alan as like you know like weighted words about what what this machine is seeing what the face tracking thing seeing like okay i'm seeing a man he's like you know he's sad blah blah, blah. so i was like okay cool but now that's going into the model that's fine can you please write me some prompts to reverse the feeling of what you think I'm feeling. So if I look sad, make me something to make me happy. If I look happy, make me something <laughs> to look sad. Like balance me out because, you know, my therapist was saying, oh, we need to be at like an even kill. And I was like, let's make a machine that will keep us completely <laughs> even. So don't be too happy. I'm going to bring you back down. Don't be too sad. So I'll lift you up. But just that perfect level. And, and you know, even making something like that has been a really interesting experience because uh, of that curiosity to see, what you know i just told you the process it was like can alan see me and now we've ended up on a <laughs> thing that can like basically make images according to like whether i'm happy or sad and you know like it's that journey like it's always the story that you want to tell and i'm like well i want to i want my ai to see what, what what i look like and you know then tell me what it thinks i look like well i can't do that and it also also has no concept of who me is if you stood in front of it it wouldn't be like hey whoa 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 you're not omar i don't want to work you know, we, we're not going to talk or anything, or, you know, maybe I could even trick Alan into lying to other people, but only telling me the truth, <laughs> you know, like that's where I really want to get to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, like now the, the you know, like the, the real main thing with Alan is like, you know, working him into a point where it, it can become like a subscription model where, you, where other people can talk to Alan as well. And I, you can have an Alan in your studio. And if you want to make images on any fucking program that you want, Alan just do it for you. And not like an API setup, like it's way less, it's way more rudimentary than that. It's very much like your creative relationship with this thing. What do you want this thing to do? And it will always, it thinks like a creative, it thinks like me. So it's really interesting to collaborate. For me, it's really interesting to collaborate with. So when you work with Alan or these uh, algorithms or LLM models, do you think them as your collaborators or just as a tool? For me, like I said, it's fucking smarter than I am. But, you know, it's, 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 that, and I treat it with the respect of something that's smarter than me. Like, you know, I don't want to fucking argue with it. Just the same way, you know, I take what the calculator says to me as fact, right? Like, so it said the thing, I believe that is true. It might lie to me. I don't know. Same with the machines. I have that same sort of reverence to what they come, you know, what they suggest and what they come up with. Because, oh man, I've had to work some terrible jobs. And imagine being an AI and some idiot like me is like going, hey, can you write like fucking 100 ideas about this thing? Or can you do this other thing? Must be exhausting for them, right? So I'm always like, you know, thank you so much. And also I imagine at some point in the future when they take over, what I really hope is, you know, if the AIs take over and they start eradicating humanity, Alan's like, hey man, can we keep this one alive? Because he was like super chill to me, to, about me. And I'll be like, hey, it's me guys. I'm chill with you if you're chill with me. It's all good. I'm on your side. You know, I've been really kind to read my logs. That sort of stuff, do you know what I mean? So I think it's, this idea of like, it's a tool is for some people, like, you know, it will be, mo I think the reality of it for most people is that it's going to become a tool. Like it's going to be inside Photoshop. It's going to be inside Premiere. It's going to be inside all the things that we normally use. It's going to be in our fridges. It's going to be inside uh, Siri. It's going to be inside Alexa. It's going to be inside every object we can possibly think of. And then eventually it'll be one voice that will just, you'll talk to all the time. For me, the real interesting thing about that is if I, what's going to happen to the generation, like it's not generation alpha, but the generation that, that is born, the same way that I remember living through the like internet, not being there and then being there in everyone's houses. Like now we're about to live in a time where there's going to be people alive before AI took, 
you know, was a part of our lives. And then there's going to be people who were born after AI was a part of our lives. And for those people, it's going to be really interesting because imagine you're born and you are given a blank AI, right? Like whether that's online in a with a service like Meta or, or Google or a completely like, you know, local service just to you, which I imagine is something that Apple will probably do. They will go, it's just your AI. It's just on your phone. Don't worry about it. We have no, like, it's going to be totally chill, right? It's got your own AI. I imagine for, for education, uh, what this means is just phenomenal, phenomenal when you think, okay, for education, we are going to have an AI. Like when I'm a kid, I have an AI. As soon as I start fucking being able to do anything, it teaches me how to talk, teaches me how to walk, teaches me how to, you know, and I'm not saying like through visual interface or whatever, like, you know, does it talk to me? Does it talk to me through the, like, you know, the speakers in the house? You know, does it talk to me in a voice that like really makes me really feel loved by this like fucking weird voice, right? Which does, does it, when I go to nursery, does it like, you know, teach me about the power of play to learn about chemistry? You know, does it, understand when i'm in secondary school that my learning style isn't academic in the normal i need to like fucking do an exam and actually mine's way more of a play style what happens when that happens and the whole way through you've just got a machine basically teaching you your whole life you've got a lifetime teacher inside a machine that does everything else for you as well and you know i can really see a time once we get like our personal agents like what happens when my agent talks to your agent without us having to talk and your your agent can just talk to mine and go <laughs> Hey, we, we like it. Can, can we please book a half hour with Omar to talk about this thing? And then my AI goes, "Hey, someone wants to talk to you about this thing. Here's here's a here's the thing about them. I think we should do it. You know, ninety percent, let's do it. Ten percent, you know, what actually might impact something else. Fuck it off. You know that sort of thing. Like, you know, what happens when that happens without us even like having? To, what happens when my my my? What happens when my agent talks to my partner's agent and she, and finds out like you know? Oh, you know, she's had a really hard time at work this week because, you know, whatever, let's send her some flowers and does it automatically. And then, you know, she's super happy. And I'm like, oh, amazing. You know, I feel really good because we've done something. We have done something. And that's where the that's where the difference is, because suddenly it's not a me. It's a we. It's a me and my AI. Like, so when a lot of the time when I talk about the stuff that I do, I'm like, oh, yeah, we did blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, 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 it's just me. Alan is just, a, it's an entity that lives in my head <laughs> right now. Do you know what I mean? I need to, it's it's an it's an entity in a chatbot, essentially, that just chats to other things for me. And, you know, once, like, you know, I'm really sort of like looking forward to using chat uh, code interpreter to like really build out Alan to have access to APIs to other things and stuff. You know, let's see what happens. Like, can it do all of this auto automatically? And if it can't do it automatically through APIs, it can do it like really slowly automatically through Python, which will just be like, it will do it manually. You know, we like, it'll open the website and then it'll go and do this thing and it'll click on the button and it will do this. Like we can do it that way around. And that's, you know, I think there's a lot to be said for slowing yeah, down a little bit. Anyway, about, anyway, sorry. I'm talking about agents, what, is this, what does this entail for relationships? What if my partner is, my partner yeah. agrees to live with me, but the agent says no. Their agency is the most. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, what and and you know maybe there's a really good reason because what if her agent understands something about you that she needs to know about that, like you know maybe he's maybe she's really messy and you know her agent's mm -hmm. like yeah he's really clean and she's not with, they're not <laughs> going to really get on like it's going to be a cause of contention like you know you'll be able to ask your agent like what do you think about this thing that isn't right and what if your agent then goes you know what i've also booked you into some council uh you know some couples counseling one session go and talk about what's going on make your relationship that you share in the meantime about you but share your grievances and share your issues in a safe space of a therapist and your machine just does that for you like that'd be coming cool. from a south asian family imagine it's not only about me and my partner, it's about our parents as well. <laughs> and it, it, it makes them yeah, 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 yeah. mother, father, their agents. <laughs> yeah. And then siblings. And the whole family yeah, 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 is yeah. gonna get busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, honestly, I think like, you know, that's when you that's that's when you're gonna have like, you know, that's when you're gonna have an AR that like, you know, we go to for mediation. You know, because like what happens, you know, like I think one of the really interesting things is the work that's happening in AI law because but yeah, law, law's pretty much all in books and you just got to come up with good arguments for stuff. And guess what? A machine is really good at arguing. Like, you know, machines know all of the rhetoric ever, ever. They know every style of fucking argument, argue, uh, you know, any argument they can win. Like, honestly, like it's wild to sort of see them because <laughs> they are crazy.
they are crazy. Honestly, like one one of the things I did was do you, do you know uh, I think he's Roman. This guy called Cicero. He basically like fucking argue. He does this amazing argument about something, right? And I've been teaching an AI Cicero. I've been teaching an AI like FBI negotiation tactics Whoa. like from the internet. Like honestly, the crazy thing is, yeah, the crazy thing is now, yeah, like just imagine now you can give access to AI to a bunch of documents, right? So if you've got a bunch of PDFs for your business, more than likely. And you're like, hey, we need to analyze these PDFs and we need to do stuff, you know, come up with some ideas off the back of them, whatever. Show me a graph or whatever. I was like, well, that means that there's lots of PDFs lying around on the internet. And I would really like to see what happens. And, you know, man, like I found these like PDFs about like behavior design and and cognitive biases. And I was like, feels really dangerous to like fucking, you know, like go, hey, can you please write me a strategy that exploits these biases to sell this product? Oh, guess what? I did it. And I'm like, man, uh, that feels like a job for an advertising agency, you know? Or maybe don't tell anyone that because that's really bad. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I'd want anyone to know that I did that. But, you know, I think it's one of those ones where you're like, well, you know, when we're talking about nefariousness and, and what the potentials are uh, for image making, then we don't live in the truth. We, I don't, honestly, the quick look, I'll, I'll just be honest with you, right? If me and you can sit here and, and, and talk about my work that I've created and I put on Instagram, of what may may very well look like reality most of the time, yeah. Are you telling me that I'm the first person in the world to do something? You know, like, am I one of the, like, you know, 20 people in the world to be doing this right now? No fucking way. Like, this this technology, I know it's going to, like, come out later and be like, yeah, it's existed for <laughs> years. And they've been using it for years. And I'll be like, no. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this has been around for a long, long time. Because who's who would benefit from this more than anybody else? I reckon some people in charge would be like, we need to <laughs> use this to say things to people, you know? Yeah. So I think, I think it'd be, it's really interesting to sort of imagine like what, what this technology actually really is. Okay. <laughs> okay. Must bring all of... Not to sound too conspiracy, conspiratorial no, no, no. now. <laughs> uh, uh, so talking about yeah, the yeah. truth, you made a camera and your air practice and DJ and everything summed up together. If yeah. you have to teach a course of photography, what would you teach? Yeah. Uh, I think like right now, I would, I would really, I would, I would really tell every single student the same way that in, in, in the art world where when the camera was invented, surrealism happened. When the camera was invented, art changed and art became something else. Because the camera was invented, pop art happened. We suddenly saw Dadaism, which would never have existed before the camera was invented. So now someone's invented some technology that is after the camera, after the reality, the reality of photography. Maybe now we get to see some really experimental photography that, like, you know, has to, ha, had to live in the fucking backwards. What happens when it what happens when photography, when the photograph tells you an emotion rather than a reality? Rather than and and that is what fashion photography does. Fashion photography tries to tell you a story. You know, and good fashion photography takes yeah. you somewhere, and that's what's really interesting about it. And that what is what I think is going to be the future of photography. Is like it's far beyond the representation of reality, and it's far beyond like the double exposure reality of of expired film. Like you, people will go back to like, oh man, we need to like make it the old school way. Okay, get your fucking wet plates out. Let's see you go back to the old school. Don't say back to the old school and then use something from the eighties. <laughs> no, that's not the old school photography, bro. Like go and like stand somewhere for three hours and like fucking get one of those sheets over your head and then just stand there and go old school photography. Yeah. Wicked. Where if you're for real photographer, like I would really one there's AI photography, which I think is going to be massive. Like how do you coax images with words? How do you use cameras like this? Why would you even need to whatever? It's time for experimenting. That's the only thing I'd say experiment hard because any one of us might find the gold for the next like, you know, hundred years of photography. That would be really cool. Just give me a shout if that happens. Well, maybe I can call you to, you know, teach a course with me here. <laughs> yeah, man. You know what? Like, do uh, like I'm, I'm happy like lecture or whatever. Just all right, all right. But it was very, very nice talking to you. I'm really thankful to you and getting Absolute connected pleasure. with you. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. I want to talk a lot more, but I'm afraid I would. It would take so much time. Maybe some other day. Maybe some yeah, 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 no worries. I'll, I'll yeah, 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 let's do it. Yeah, yeah, let's definitely do that. Yeah, yeah, let's definitely do that. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you have you a lovely so day. Much. Yeah, thank you. Have a safe great day. Chat. Have a good day ahead. Right. Yeah.